right, so my birthday just passed and I bought a whole bunch of books because everyone kept giving me book vouchers. Uh, so brief side note, uh, I bought so many books that I kind of felt very wasteful and inappropriate and I had to remind myself like that I got book vouchers so it made sense to spend them and I just love spending them all at once or in a short time rather than uh, just keep having them for a year because that just makes it feel less special. Of course one week I bought 14 books and I really wanted to show them to you. I have some really hefty classics here, I have some really light uh, horror novels, I have everything in between so I'll just get into it and I'm really excited. Uh, so I'll start with the first one I bought which is Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World by Haruki Murakami. So um, yeah of course I'm excited for all of these but this one is just I, I can't wait. So basically this story has two timelines and basically I don't know a lot about it. I just know that it's one of his darker novels I think uh, as well as one of his most magical realism hefty uh, books. Um, and basically I was a bit afraid because uh, I watch a lot of Kate Files videos who uh, talks about Murakami like no one else. And she said like, oh, don't start with um, this one, don't start with The Wind of Birth Chronicle, but especially don't start with this one. Uh, so I started with The Wind of Birth Chronicle and I just adored it and uh, I mean, I just knew that I was looking for something really dark, really magical, realism heavy. So I decided to just give this one a go. Um, it also, it just looks gorgeous. It was one of the only ones they had in the edition I usually get, so it's really exciting. Yeah. And it starts in a lift, and it just... It starts in a lift. I love lifts uh, too, really bad, not as much to standing. But that was one which I think will be useful for my thesis, but if not, then it'll just be a fun read. And it's High Rise by J.G. Ballard, which is a kind of dystopian book about uh, like this enormous uh, building and so basically the higher you go the richer the people that live there I think and there's a lot of criminal activity and just a lot of bad things going on. Basically I already read another book by J.G. Ballard and his writing is just the best thing ever. I'm just going to put on my glasses anyway because I can't see that. Uh, but his writing is just the best thing ever. His writing is so interesting. Like, he writes about consumerism, capitalism, in this kind of postmodern way. I loved particularly his descriptions of, like, highways and cars and those kinds of things. So I just can't wait to see what this brings me. And then I bought one which was kind of... It's, it's kind of heavy. I don't know when I'm going to get to it. But I really do want to read it. And it's Swan's Way by Marcel Proust. And it's the first volume of the In Search of Lost Time book. Um, so it's really big, or, well, it's not that big. It's like just over 500 pages. But it's like, it's one of those really canonical texts, which really intrigues me because even though uh, there are so many problems with the whole concept of the canon it's so interesting to just read texts that have influenced so many other people particularly uh, because this is a modernist text and I just love modernism so I can't wait I kind of wanted to get like the Penguin edition um, with translation by Lydia Davis which I thought was really exciting to have a woman translate this book but I didn't really like a translation, <laughs> so I decided to go for this one, which is translated by uh, Moncrief and Kilmartin. Kilmartin? Kilmartin? I, probably not Kilmartin, but yeah, <laughs> looking forward to it. And then I bought two kind of shorter books. Um, and they kind of go together in my mind for very obvious reasons. 
and their record of a night too brief by Hiromi Kawakami and a convenience store woman by uh, Sayaka Murata and oh my god I okay so this one it wasn't exactly a cover by but the fact that it has the gor the most gorgeous cover I've ever seen kind of made me go hmm I kind of want to read this even more than I usually would maybe have wanted to. Uh, so I started checking it out and it has the worst reviews. But the reviews I like two people I have on Goodreads rated it very low. And one of them actually gave it a review on Goodreads and as they said that it was very weird and just a bit too weird. And I thought, oh I that, that sounds like something I would enjoy. Uh, so I checked it out and I read the first few lines and they are like What was that itch on my back? I wondered and then I realized that it was the night. The night was nibbling into me. It sounds really cool! Uh, I did realize after buying it that these are three stories um, Well, I'd actually hoped it would just be one longer novella But still it's going to be a very good sign so Yay! And then this one. I've been wanting to have this and to read this mainly for over a year when I first saw it in What is Sense Piccadilly when I was in London. And I just found it a bit too expensive at that point. But it's been on my mind ever since. And they didn't have the really pretty yellow edition anymore with like the picture of the lady. But they did have this and it was a lot cheaper. <laughs> And it's this woman who works in a convenience store and she's really happy with her life. Everything's going well. She's just working in the store and it's fun. Um, but everyone's just bitching to her like, oh, you're, you're not doing what you should be doing. You should be getting higher in your career and you should be getting a boyfriend. And she's just very indifferent to all those ideas. And she just wants to keep working in her store because she likes it. And that just sounds really interesting. Everyone said that it was really, really made you think. And then I bought a book which is kind of like in line with the In Search of Lost Time book in the sense that it's really big and intimidating. But like this is just one I've been really been wanting to read and I think this is going to be a really high rating. For the simple reason that it's about philosophy and it's a highly acclaimed classic and I usually like these two things except for when it's rather prejudiced but I really like philosophy and I really like interesting concepts and classics and dark books and this has it all it is Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky and I do have to say that um, the Penguin translation might have, like the, yeah, the Penguin translation for the Penguin Classics might have suited me a little bit better, but, um, yeah, I just really liked this cover and I didn't have the other one at that moment and I just really wanted it and this translation seems very good as well. It seems very, you know, very classic and it's a really highly acclaimed translation. It's translated by Richard Pivier and Larissa Volop. If in any case you haven't heard of this, if by any chance you haven't heard of this, but you do know all the booktube classics, this is what The Secret History is inspired by. So, um, this is kind of a man who murders someone and then he gets punished for it and he feels bad, I think. Um, and the ending just came back to me because I saw it, saw it spoiled in a tweet once. But who cares? Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, it's quite big. It's almost 600 pages, but just look at it. It's so gorgeous and it's floppy as hell. Like, incredible. And it just sounds really great and so I really want to read it. And then I bought something a bit lighter because I thought I want to buy something that's a bit lighter. Um, but that's really dark, but <laughs> it's not like a really heavy classic. It's a classic though, but 
that is the same sense. It's The Woman in Black by Susan Hill, which is a ghost story about like someone goes to a funeral and sees a woman in black and the whole village uh, just won't speak about her because there's something going on. It's a mystery and it's a ghost story. Sounds really fun. I used to be too afraid to read this, but now I thought I finally dare to read it. And so I want to. And then there's another one for my thesis, potentially. I'm not sure yet because I haven't really um, properly made a question yet because I still have some time. Um, and I haven't read this book yet, so I don't know. Um, but I think I want to write, among other topics, about postmodernism and consumerism. And this seems like the ultimate novel. It's Martin Ames's Money. I've been wanting to have this book for over four years, I think. Um, I'm kind of sad because I used to, like, I've been eyeing it for quite a while, at least one and a half years. I've been, like, looking at it, making eye contact, knowing, like, oh, you're here, I'm here, someday I'll get you home. Um, but now, like, <laughs> just a few months before I probably bought it, I was about to buy it in March and then I didn't, because uh, I thought it'll be there. Um, yeah, it turns out they changed the cover. Like now it's this, and uh, it used to be like this airplane uh, window, and I really liked it because if anything's maximum consumerism, it's airplanes. Um, but the phone is alright, I guess. Um, basically, this is it feels like a kind of Confederacy of Dances type story where it's just about a really unlikable main character who uh, consumes a lot, uh, like American Psycho, but without the murder. I think I haven't read. Either of all the all of these novels, uh, he's grabbing everything he can to save his massive appetites, alcohol, tobacco, all those things. Uh, so that's a lot of fun. I've heard good things about it. I haven't heard a lot about it, but it's been on my radar for a very long time. So it's about time we checked it out. I really like those books with like very intense consumerism. So yeah, it's going to be great. Then I bought another one which has been on my radar for ages, basically, hundreds of years. Um, it's Italo Suevo's Zeno's Conscience. It's about a psychiatrist and a man, and psychiatrist telling this man, who is like his client, okay, or his patient, and maybe just write down your life story, it might be good. Uh, so the man starts doing that, but he's basically kind of a very bad person or something. He's, uh, also very strongly addicted to cigarettes. I mainly just have a strong feeling associated with it that this will kind of go into this philosophy-like things with regard to maybe existentialism, maybe. but it's going to be really dark, I think. And that's usually good. It's a modern classic. I love modern classics, so. And it's, it's so floppy that it almost felt like I've never seen a book be so floppy. <laughs> Then there's another floppy one, The Beetle by Richard Marsh. It's one of those Victorian Gothic horror novels when, yeah, it's about a man and a creature that's not quite human, not quite insect. It's about Egypt. I hope it doesn't do it in a weird orientalist way. It probably will. But I think it will be a very, very interesting book. I think it will just be a lot of fun. I hope it's kind of like, yeah. So um, I told my boyfriend, hey, I hope this is going to be like uh, Jekyll and Hyde or Dracula, but without knowing what's going on, you know? Um, so just like the original readers of Jekyll and Hyde didn't know, that, uh, well, didn't know the plot twist and I named the plot twist and he was like, I've never heard of that and I'm just like, how, I've, I've just spoiled Jekyll and Hyde for you, but I don't want to spoil myself for this. It's basically just a horror novel. Sounds really good, sounds really fun. I really want to read it, let's do it. And as if that horror novel wasn't enough, there will be more. Um, and this one, is so exciting. But it's really heavy. 
it has released by Max and Tulielewski and I mean you probably like you probably know that if you know about this book you probably know that no one reviews it excessively in the sense that they tell you what's it what it is about because they all have a lot of difficulty explaining what is going on in here and um, only thing I know is it's a horror novel everyone's incredibly scared uh, has this bigger on the inside it doesn't sound very scary in itself but who knows maybe I'll look back at this and think oh my god how could I possibly have thought that wouldn't be scary and the formatting is really weird so like this is this is definitely uncommon um yeah i'm really looking forward to it love plus millionaires and love horror what could be better i've heard that it's quite academic i really like academic things it's going to be a blast and then i bought another book i've been putting off for a while all these books except for like the woman in black and uh the japanese novels are books i've been putting off for multiple years uh, I'm not actively putting off, but more like I didn't get around to buying them and reading them because I have so many books on my radar. Um, but basically, Pet Cemetery by Stephen King seems like a lot of fun. Things come back to life. Uh, yeah. And it's not all fun and games. There's a cat. The cat comes back to life, I'm assuming. But there's like this uh, highway and a lot of roadkill occurs and there are people with pets pets die children bury them at the pet cemetery um yeah those kinds of things you know and i just heard about something else that's in the plot um but i'd rather have not known so i won't tell you that but it's apparently really atmospheric it's really scary it's all that i don't know every everything about it i don't know how it ends that's exciting uh i know one plot detail because steam king's other book insomnia spoils a lot of deaths in all stephen king's books and i just like recognized something i thought i've heard that name before turns out yeah it's it's from this one uh i don't really yeah 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 great we're at the two last books uh, and these two basically I just had my hair is awful I just had uh, a bit of voucher of, uh, left and I thought which books will I really regret if I don't get them and I thought and I thought and I thought and I decided on two books that I always like that always lose the uh, lose it against the others so i've had this in my hands so often uh one that lost it to these two though is giovanna's room by james baldwin i really want to read it it just hasn't happened i don't own it at some point i will probably read it but it just hasn't happened and but the two i did buy i both added to goodreads as Hey, I've heard about this. I don't want to forget this. Over six years ago. <laughs> it's about time I finally get around to them. Um, so the first one is We by Yevgeny We by Yevgeny Zamyatin. It's translated from Russian by Clarence Brown. Um, basically this is what 1984 was inspired by. by. So it's kind of but it's a dystopian, utopian situation um, where everyone's like really into numbers, I think. And it's, it revolves around this mathematician who dreams in numbers and all that. And then he realizes that he has a soul or something. Sounds cool. Sounds cute. I'm really curious what this is going to bring me, but I've been wanting to get to this for a very long time. Um, so yeah, it's exciting. And it's one of those really nice uh, black classics, you know, which, again, are very floppy. <laughs> and then the very last one is also a modern classic. And it's a book by Truma Capote. And I previously read In Cold Blood. And as opposed to probably 
I feel like all people I read it together with, because I read it for like Adi Ship's book club. Um, everyone hated it. I really, really loved it. I just found it so atmospheric and so much fun, and I really liked the writing style, even though apparently it was dry as hell. But I loved it. <laughs> But this one is Breakfast at Tiffany's. Um, so I mainly know it from the song, to be honest. I haven't seen the film. And why would I see the film if I can't read the book? Um, probably because it's less racist, as I've heard. But still, I want to read the book first, because for some reason I haven't seen any famous films. This is about New York in the 1940s. And I just... It includes like three or four more stories, I've, uh, two or three more stories, but I just like, I really like those like modern classics about women. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. I'm really looking forward to every book because it's so exciting. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, please tell me if you've read any of these. Uh, what you thought about them. If you also get that really weird feeling when you spend excessive amounts of book vouchers on books. <laughs> um, but I've, I don't think I've ever been this excited. Like, I just had exam week uh, from basically my birthday on, uh, like, that's always when I start locking myself in the library. And it's just that every day I studied all day and then went to the water stones. And it was just the best thing. And I'm so happy with all the books I bought. And I can't wait to read everything. So I'm just rushing through the books I'm currently reading uh, to hopefully get to all of these. And, um, but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon, I hope. Bye!